Hi, this is Sunil Rege from Sightseeing.com. Today I'm going to take you through a practical application of regression analysis, a concept that uh, many candidates giving the MRC Psych and the RANZAP critical appraisal exam uh, find quite difficult. Um, I would hope that you've gone through the basics um, after going through the Psych Evidence course or by reading the textbooks, because today I'm going to show you some practical uh, applications of uh, the regression analysis. A regression analysis is a very powerful statistical technique that helps us analyze the relationship between a number of variables on the outcome variable. So it's given by the basic equation y is equal to a plus bx. Here I've put b1x1 and b2x2 because there are two variables. y is the outcome variable or the dependent variable, whilst a is a constant, it's a constant number. B is the correlation coefficient of x1 and b2 is the correlation coefficient of x2. So let's take an example. Um, say you thought that height is related to your uh, exam score. Quite implausible, but let's use this for explanation purposes. Here, the exam score will be y because it's the outcome variable. And you want to know how does the exam score change with a unit change in height. So x is the unit change in height and b is the correlation coefficient. So here I've put um, I've, I've put the, the formula in here and you can see the correlation coefficient b is 0 0.3. Um, change in height is a certain number x and constant is a. So if I change height to say 20, you can see that the exam score changes becomes 9.5. If this became 2, then you can clearly see that the exam score becomes 4.1. So it gives you, it can help you predict what y will be based on a unit change in x. So that's the premise uh, behind a regression analysis. Now let's go to a broader example. Here you can see the the variables price, square foot, beds, baths, cars, and age. Now, if you take a big picture view, you can clearly see the data is for most likely houses. It is for houses. Uh, this is the price. Uh, this is a data set for um, prices of houses in a suburb of Australia. And these are the independent variables, square foot, beds, baths, cars, and age. So the obvious question is, how does price differ with um, the change in square foot, beds, baths, cars, and age? And that's where regression analysis becomes really powerful because it helps you to combine this in a model to really predict how price will change. So let's go through that particular example. I will highlight, so I'm doing a regression analysis. I'm going to highlight this data set. I'll then use a software called StatPortGo. You can see here I go to regression analysis. Now clearly I'll be doing a multiple regression because I'm including multiple variables, square foot, beds, baths, cars, and age. Um, unlike the previous example, which was a linear regression, where I just looked at two variables. There are other terms such as logistic regression, Poisson regression, which are covered in the basics and psych evidence. I won't go through this uh, to avoid any confusion. So the regression analysis, I use multiple regression. Click OK because I include the entire data set. It asks me to select the response variable. The response variable is nothing but the outcome variable. So I do that, price, click OK. And then it says select one or more explanatory variables. Now, as a researcher, I can choose one, two, three, four, five, as much as I want and play around with this to see which one's most linked to price and which one's least linked to price. But for this purpose, for the purpose of this example, let's use all five. And I will then create one. Uh, let's do it on a new worksheet. Uh, let's call it new data. Okay. Yes, let's do that. Okay. And as you can see here, I now get a whole regression model. Now, in a regression model, the important things that you want to find out are, firstly, what's the goodness of fit of model? And what that basically means is, 
the input variables or the predictor variables that they that you put in, how much of a variation of the outcome variable do they predict? So here you can see the R square. The R square tells you that 74.7% of the variation in price can be explained by these five variables. That also tells you that approximately 25% is explained by other variables that aren't there in this regression model. So you might come up with a few more, put them in here, and you might find that the R square increases. Obviously, if it's a perfect fit, that's the R square will be 100%. So what this regression analysis helps me do is now helps me predict what the price will be based on my input for the different variables. So let's say I want to purchase um, a property, 1,000 square foot, or I want to know how much should I pay for it. So uh, there is a property for 1,000 square foot, beds, say three bedroom, baths, two baths, cars, two car spaces, and let's say it's 10 years old. That tells me, let's go up, that tells me that that property is going to cost me $950,000. That's in 1,000. Now let's say that age was just two years old. Let's see what happens now. Clearly it becomes 1,040,000. So you can see that each of these variables is some way linked to price, and that's given by your coefficient. That's the Bs for the difference of so B1, B2, B3, B4, B5. And you can see age is negatively correlated. You can see which one's statistically significant. These are the confidence intervals for these particular variables as well. So this is, in summary, what a regression analysis is. Now let's go back to the original data set. Okay, so in this original data set, I can also now look at the relationship between the individual variables. So let's say I wanted to see um, a, the, the uh, create a regression plot between two variables, price and say square foot. Um, you will see regression curves, scatter plots in the exam, and the examiners will ask you to interpret it. So here I'm going to create a regression plot for price and square foot. I go to scatter, and you can see I've created a scatter plot. Let's enlarge this. Now I want to create a regression line, add a trend line. I want to display the equation, which is y is equal to a plus bx and the r square. And you can see here that, let me increase this so you can see. And you can see here that I've got the equation y, which is price, x, which is square foot. I can predict the price based on a unit change in square foot. And it also tells me that square foot explains 66% of the variation in price. So square foot plays quite a big part. And now I can do the same for price and beds, price and car spaces, um, etc. So it this hopefully gives you an example of a regression analysis um, and how useful it is. And you can see it can be applied for a range of uh, fields. So for economic research, for example, you can put, you know, how do interest rates affect property prices or uh, consumption levels, et cetera, et cetera. You can do uh, a host of things. Um, now let's see how this has been applied to a psychiatric study. Now, this is an example. Um, I'm not going to go through the entire study, but I'll show you a table that's been constructed here. They looked at what are the predictors of recovery, uh, and they looked at positive and negative syndrome scale, positive and negative symptoms. So clearly, this is the outcome um, variable, which is PAN scores, positive and negative. And they've used a number of these predictor variables to see whether these explain um, a change in the PAN's positive or PAN's negative. Um, now let's look at the first one. What I'm interested in is, of course, the p-value, the r-square. So this tells me very quickly 
that 30% of the variation in the PANS positive at six months has been explained by these variables. That means approximately 70%, 69%. Um, there are other variables that haven't been included or taken into account in this model. Similarly here, very poor, only 27% of the variance in PANS positive 12 months is explained by these variables. Um, and you can look at the individual variables and see their, co their coefficients, which is the beta uh, that we covered in the y is equal to a plus bx. And you can see um, baseline PANS positive is negative correlated, but it's a very poor correlation. Uh, this one's a poor positive correlation. Um, this one's a very poor negative correlation. And you can keep doing it. You can go to the p-value and see which one's statistically significant. Uh, statistical significance is given by these asterisks. And you can see which ones are statistically significant. But going through this regression model, this one seems to be the most powerful to explain PANS negative at six months. Approximately 61% uh, of PANS negative at six months is explained by these variables. And amongst this, you can see this one's the most statistically significant. And it also has a reasonable or moderate correlation. Um, so baseline's PANS negative is positively correlated, and it's a moderate strength with PANS negative at six months and it's statistically significant. We will be doing correlation um, interpretation uh, in another lecture, uh, but this is just a quick interpretation. So you can practice this with a range of papers. You will often see um, regression analysis used in uh, randomized control trials or in cohort studies or case control studies in order to adjust for confounders. Um, because as we know in case control co cohort studies, there will be a range of variables that will impact on the outcome variable. These are known as confounding variables. And therefore, regression analysis really does one powerful thing, which is minimizes confounding bias. Now, to make it interesting for you, um, a regression analysis has also been used to find out what makes Warren Buffett a really successful investor. So for those of you that are looking to retire early on a beach in Bahamas, maybe, um, you might want to um, pay some attention here. So what the researchers did here, they used a number of predictor variables um, to see what, uh, which of these predictor variables were uh, predicted the outcome, which is the returns. Um, and what they found was, they found, I'll read this out, we identified several general features of his portfolio he buys stocks that are safe with low beta and low volatility, cheap value stocks with low price to book ratios and high quality, meaning stocks that are profitable, stable, growing with high payout ratios. This statistical finding is consistent with Graham and Dodds and Buffett's writing when he talks about buying quality merchandise when it's marked down. So this is, in summary, a regression analysis and as you can see it can be used to basically examine anything any question you have and you come up with your predictor variables put the data in and see how that affects your outcome variable so I hope that this has been useful um, we will be doing more lectures down the track um, covering other concepts um, if you haven't gone through the basics of a regression analysis um, or any other concepts of critical appraisal, visit psychscene.com for the psych evidence course. Until next time, good luck, and I hope to see you on another lecture.